Hi there, Jamie Keat here tonight at Teachers Tech. Hope you're having a great night tonight. Tonight I want to go over FL Studio 20 or Fruity Loop Studio 20. It's just recently come out. It's one of the uh, most popular digital audio workstations out there where how you can rearrange and create such great music. So this is going to be a general overview for you tonight, just kind of going over the basics. Try downloading the uh, free download, play with it. This is not a free program, but the download will give you a, a lot of information how it works and hopefully this tutorial will help you out with just getting started with it tonight. So let's get started here today with FL Studio 20. So before we get started here today, I just want to give you a little example how the whole process works inside uh, this example file that we have here. So you can see over here on the playlist, so I have the green line representing what's being played right now and I can drag through it and you can see all the different components of it. Now, when we start though, we just start with uh, a pattern. So when we start our example in a few moments, we'll be starting uh, with a pattern that will be blank and we'll have nothing in it. So these patterns though, get uh, put onto the playlist just by dragging them into the place uh, and manipulating them how you want. But to get these patterns, you need to kind of look over to the left in the channel rack. So we have all these channels in these rows. And if I just go ahead and let's say click on a certain channel. So if I drop down, I can select different channels. If I was going to pick chords, you can see how this one is highlighted here. So if I just go ahead, I'm just going to stop this one and I'm just going to open up chords and just play it within here. You can see that's just that one, uh, that one channel or say that one uh, pattern that's making this sound. But when put together inside everything, this gets put over here, making that sound in when you can, when you're compiling or composing your music at the end, you're putting all those patterns together inside your playlist to get that sound that you want. So to get the new screen that I am in right now, we want to open a new project. Our menu in the top left hand corner, you can see if I go file, new, I can also start from templates, but in this beginner walkthrough, I'm just going to be uh, showing you the basics from just the new project right here. So once you get into this right here, you can see you have a lot of different windows and let me just give you a brief explanation how some things move and what things are. Now you can grab these, uh, grab everything and move them around to get it to uh, the way you want. Maybe you have dual monitors and you can move things around. If any of these windows get closed at any time uh, like this, you can simply open them up by finding the correct uh, menu item here to open them back up. Uh, one important thing that I really like in this, they, say they have the hint uh, panel right up here. Uh, so what you do is just hover over anything. So if you're wondering what something is like this, you hover over it and you can see that's the tempo there. If you want to know what this is, that's the song position. So it's a great way for beginners to make sure that they know everything around FL Studio. Now just going around a little bit more here, the uh, browser, uh, we have our browser browser panel over here and this is where you can be uh, bringing in uh, things into your channel. You can go over your history. So if I look at this, this is everything here. This is just based on the current project. But if I look at all, you can see all the different things that you can bring into the project that you're doing. So if you uh, wanted a different plugin or demos, uh, let's say if we wanted to uh, just put in some packs and if I went down to vocals you can see if I click on this it will show what it is and these are the different things I can bring right in into my patterns that I'm creating with the vocals that they have so that's just a quick uh, walk around let's start by creating some music now so when we started our, our new project, we get an automatically uh, get a new pattern called pattern one. So inside this channel rack, we have this pattern when it defaults with kick, clap, hat, snare as the channels for this one represented in each row. With each one, with each row, we have a step. So you can see there's four steps and that represents a beat and it alternates color and we have 16 in total here. So right now, if I just go up to kick and I click on one of the steps, we'll just click here. I'm gonna hit my space bar to play it and it's gonna be in a looping one that goes around. And the nice thing about the looping, as I add more, I can right away hear the differences that I'm making as it plays over and over again. I can also hit play right here, and I can also hit play right up top here and pause it back and forth. So I can go and add 
to the different channels, add these, click more steps and hit play. And I start to get the beats happening from here. If I don't want any of these steps, just simply right click on them and they'll go away. So it's very simple to add the steps or take them away. Now, another thing that you might want uh, to do is change the tempo in this. So if I just hit play and I wanna change the tempo, I could drag in here and adjust it, or you can right click. And a lot of times what I'll do, type in the value, but you can see there's some quick ways uh, to just adjust it. So if I wanted it slower to 90, you can see how the temple gets adjusted right away uh, to it. I'll go back to 130, hit stop. Over here, if I just right click, you can see how it's uh, the music's being measured with the uh, bar step tick. I can change that here, but I can just click on it and it changes really quickly back and forth too, depending on how it's uh, being measured. So once in here, I have all these different uh, steps and you can see as it plays through, wherever I click represents what's gonna get played, but I can actually have this longer than this too so if I go ahead and stretch this out you can see how uh, more steps appear although they're not highlighted yet all I have to do is click once and then the next 16 comes up and then I can add my steps very quickly to this and it will repeat it uh, over and over again now I can add more of these channels if I want so if I go here and hit the plus you can see if I wanted to add the FL keys so in this case it's like a keyboard in this one so if I go ahead I'll just move this a little bit and I'll pick a couple spots for it to come in and you can hear as it goes through I'll put some more in here You also do have, if I just uh, go up top here, you have your uh, main swing so you can adjust this. I'll just play it. And you can hear how it makes the adjustments to it also. Now, when we go over to the side, these are mutes for the different tracks. So if, if you did want to turn them off, uh, you can just go through and then just listen to the one track at a time or maybe two to see how the different ones are operating on it. So you can also adjust with these knobs. We do have our pan on this one, but we do have our volume for the track if we want to adjust the level of the individual tracks on it. Uh, we can add some more, to, uh, some more things to add to this if you take a look and I showed you this briefly before inside the packs two different places to look would be in mis miscellaneous here uh, if you open up some of these ones you can see different ones that you can drag up or go to the packs you have lots of loops uh, I was showing the vocals before you can drag these and then put them right over on top of one of these ones and it will replace so if I go ahead and hit play you can hear the vocal coming out through it here too. So this is just in one case of a pattern. I'm just showing you kind of that beginner's uh, mode just to start playing with this, but this would be pattern one. If I want to add more patterns to this, I can just simply type. So I'll just leave this as pattern two, but I could rename this if you were talking about melodies or uh, percussion or something like that, you could have more of those. So I'll just quickly uh, hit enter here and I'll add some different ones for my, for my example later. So if I hit play, doesn't really sound like much here, but for example purposes, it will work. Some more things that you can do, you can adjust the way these look. So uh, maybe you're getting a lot of tracks and you just wanna visually change it with color. If you right click on these ones, you can see how you can rename color icon so I could change the color and you can pick it and then how it stands out. You can even add um, an icon to it. You can go through and pick what you would like and it will add it there just so you can have that visual uh, representation to see how to quickly find different things. So this kind of just gives you uh, what we've started here. We've started with a couple of patterns here. I'll create one more here. So I'm just gonna leave this as pattern, pattern three. You can see how it goes blank each time. I can add uh, more, uh, more tracks to this or more channels if I want, but I can just click and add these. So now I have three different patterns. I can represent all the different patterns as I click on each one. You can see how they change. So we have our patterns here. So let's get ready to kind of put this into our final arrangement inside uh, our playlist on the right hand side. Make sure you're hitting save every once in a while to make sure you don't lose anything. Just go up here and click. Now let's move our patterns into the playlist so we can uh, get ready to put everything together and then export it after. 
So with these patterns, I can just simply drag them in. You can see all the different tracks I have. I can get the move handles and I can move it all the way around in different places. If I don't want that uh, pattern there, just simply right click on it. Another way I could do it, if I'm on the pencil up here, I could just pick a certain pattern and click and it will appear also. So if I click in multiple places, it will uh, just appear wherever I click on it. And another way, if I use the paint tool here, if I click on it, I can just simply in a hurry, lay it down many times in a row and copy it across a certain track on it. Uh, if you wanted to select multiple ones, so if I right click, you can see how one disappears. If I hold down the control, with these and I can select them all. Now I can move everything. If I get the move handles on this, I can move everything at once. So if I was bringing in another one and another one, and I'll just hold down control again, I could be moving all of these around and you can make adjustments. You can see how they all change and they're all selected or I could make the, or delete them all at once like that. Now, if I bring them, uh, you can see how I've selected up here. I can also select up top so I can select the different patterns. And so I have it ready depending on what tool I'm ready to use. So if I bring, I'm just going to bring them back in a few of these patterns here. You can see how you can kind of overlap them, move them around as you want. And you can also loop them inside here. So when you're ready to play, so I'm just going to go up to here and hit play and right here. And when it plays, you can see I have the space there and then it's gonna go ahead and hit play. I'll hit my space bar to end it. You can actually loop it through here. So if there's a certain area you want it loop, I'm just gonna right click and you see that red area. So if I go ahead and hit my space bar, it's just gonna loop in that one area. So in this actually, when we export it, you can tell this certain region right here, if when I go to export it, that particular area will be exported in the format that I want. So what you need to do is take your patterns that you created, bring them into your playlist and arrange them the way you want, and then you're ready to export in our next step. Before we do our exporting at the end, take a look at the history. You can go back at any steps. So I'm under the history under the project for the current project. You can go back in steps and it shows you everything that you've done. Now let's export this. So right now I don't have anything uh, selected inside the repeat zone. So what I can do is go file and export. And at this, I can choose what I want to export it as. So if I go MP3, and then I pick a name. So I'm just going to give it an example name and you save it in the place that you would like. And now you can go through and kind of pick with the settings that you want. Do you want it to be a full song pattern? Leave a remainder and you go through and pick what you want and you from the bit rate or the bit depth on it and continue on. And then when you're done, go ahead and hit start and it will go through and let you know when it's done. If I was uh, picking a certain area, so if I go back and highlight a certain area, now if I go to file and export, and I'll do the same thing and give it another one, I'll just call this test. And now if I, you can see I have song selection on this one. So it gives you just a different option if you only want a part of it here. So I hope you like this uh, little walkthrough, beginner walkthrough, just to kind of get you playing. Like I said, download the free trial, play around with it. You can make some quite some uh, interesting uh, music here and it's a lot of fun to play with. So if you have, make sure you let other people know about this. I do weekly tech tips and if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this week and I'll see you next time.